Hello and welcome to this marketing show. I'm joined by two phenomenal TV talents today, and our special guest, in addition to my awesome co-host Cheryl Weedmark, is Jillian Mandich. And Jillian, I think you've got more letters after your name with all your degrees than you have in your name. But anyway, great to have you on. And for those of you watching, Jillian was on TV this morning and broke away to do this marketing show. She told the poll, "I've got to talk to these people." sales, marketing, and business leaders about how to be happy. Now, if you're wondering if this is an industry, it's fast evolving given what's happening, to say the least. And Jillian is the founder and the leader of the International Happiness Institute. So awesome to have you on today, Jillian. Hi, Rick. Hi, Cheryl. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to start a little bit, uh, Jillian, just by talking about some of the things that you've been asked to speak about because you're, you know, a sought after leader. You go out, you discuss happiness, you discuss fear, you discuss resiliency. And, and before we actually started recording, we were talking about that. When we discuss resiliency, what, what do you mean when you use that word? Yeah, you know, I think this is a word um, where we didn't hear it very often, and now it's almost like an everyday word that we're hearing. Um, but essentially, resilience is our ability to bounce back. It's knowing that we can rely on our strengths and our abilities to get through whatever challenge life throws at us. Because the fact of the matter is, whether it be living through a pandemic or going through a divorce or a job loss or a restructure or whatever it is, life isn't one smooth, easy ride. And so resilience is our ability to overcome challenges and to come out the other side um, better and stronger and um, more mentally healthy and strong. I think I've, I've actually been surprised, Rick, and I know we've had conversations with our customers about how resilient they are as business leaders. They've completely reinvented themselves in some ways to get in front of their customers, to be supportive, to do what they have to do, not just to serve their clients, but also to survive and thrive once this is done. And I think in the early stages, some of the conversations that we had were certainly, you know, around fear of what if what's next, what's going to happen. And those conversations have shifted. And we talked a little bit about this, this huge heavy word that I hate saying, which is guilt. And the fact that business leaders, I think, have spent so much time putting their employees and their customers first, and they're feeling a little guilty, but they need a little self-care and self-love right now. Yeah. So, and this is why we wanted Jillian on. So if you can fix everybody's challenge this morning on the Marketing Show, that would be great. Look, there's no one I know. Jillian's done TED, TEDx talks, all these things on this subject. So Jillian, what do you think if you were a business person watching today, you should be thinking about to help yourself move forward? Um, I love the languaging that you just used there, Rick, because really it's about helping ourselves. And, you know, I can share with you all the best available research and, and a lot of our happiness is actually a skill-based learned behavior. So above genetics, above environment, um, research really teaches us that all of us, no matter how happy or unhappy we're feeling right now, have the capacity to be happier. The thing is, the good news and the bad news is, I guess the good news is we have that capacity. The bad news is we have to do the work. And so especially right now with everything going on, it can be so easy to look externally for something to bring us happiness, but truly happiness and resilience and all of that is cultivated from within. So step number one is tuning into ourself and having awareness because we don't know what we don't know. And so we can't change what we don't even know what's going on. So checking in with ourselves, how are we feeling? And then from there, bringing in the self-compassion piece because self-compassion so that we're not judging ourselves. And especially right now, I think we have so much going on. There are so many added pressures. People are having to adapt their businesses. They're now having to run a company remotely in addition to homeschooling their children, right? There's a lot going on. And so trying to be compassionate with ourselves is important. And research actually shows that especially during difficult times, like say, for example, a divorce or living through a pandemic, when we are compassionate with ourselves, it allows us to get through the situation with more resilience and to recover faster. So tuning into our self-talk and being kind with ourselves, I think is the first piece of it. And then from there, knowing what makes us happy and trying to get a little bit more. And research shows that it's actually the small bursts of happiness throughout the day that cumulatively contribute to a happier life. So it doesn't need to be these big grand things. It's really asking ourselves, what are those little, seemingly little things that I'm doing throughout the day? And how can I do more of those? Because that and that taking care of ourselves is really what is going to help us get through what's going on right now with more resilience and to cultivate more happiness um, in our life. 
So Jillian, I, we built a website recently for a divorce lawyer and the traffic is through the roof. I, she couldn't have launched the site at a better time. And Cheryl knows I'm telling the truth. And if you're watching today, I'm not going to mention your name, but it's unbelievable. Okay, for a, 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 a layman human like me, okay, this self-awareness and all that, what would I do to become self-aware, you know, my dipstick of where I'm at? Um, how would I become more self-aware? Because I think some people think they're happy or maybe they're not, or maybe they think they're unhappy, but they are happy, you know? Yeah. You know, this is something, it's actually interesting. Research um, teaches us that we're actually pretty good at figuring out how happy we are. So if I ask you, Cheryl, or I ask you, Rick, or if you're watching right now or tuning in, how happy are you, say, on a scale of one to 10, and you say on a six, chances are you're pretty good at figuring out how you feel. But what we're not good at as humans is figuring out what makes us happy. We think it's those big shiny moments that like, I will be happy when, fill in the blank, when I um, have X amount of dollars in my bank, when my company is X size, when our revenue is this, when I'm married or divorced, whatever it is. Um, but research really teaches us that happiness is a practice, it's not a destination. So we don't get that big shiny moment or that thing and then all of a sudden we're happy for the rest of our life. Happiness is something that we have to work on our entire life. It's like fitness, right? You would never, start exercising and then be fit and strong and then be like, okay, I've reached fitness. I don't have to exercise anymore. Right. We, we understand that in order to live a healthy life, we have to move our bodies all the time. And happiness is the same thing. So self-awareness when it comes to happiness is number one, about just like literally checking in with yourself, asking yourself, how do I feel? And then knowing that you can do something about it and figuring out and asking yourself, what are those things that bring me joy? Um, or what are those things that don't drain my energy? What are those things that I love to do that when I'm in them, I'm in almost like a state of flow where you don't know what's going on and starting to create a list of those things um, is a good way because happiness, even though it's universal and that we all want to be happy. And especially if you ask a parent, like Cheryl, like if you said, you know, um, what do you want for your kid, right? You want them to grow up and be happy. We all want that. And so it really is about knowing that it's universal in that way, but also it's so individual. There's no one formula for happiness. There's no one thing that I can tell every single person to do to, in order to be happy. We all need to figure that out for ourselves. And so that is, can be daunting in a way because it requires us to do work, but at the same time, it can actually be empowering because when we know that we actually have control over a lot of that, then we can actually start to take steps to do that because it's within our control. Mm -hmm. um, Jillian, we have about a minute left before we wrap up. I just wanted to ask really quickly, um, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of customers that are business leaders. And so what do you advise, like if you had to give them any piece of advice on how to motivate, inspire, and create that kind of culture that we've been talking about today for their team, what would you say? I would say that, you know, really leadership starts from within. And so the way we treat ourselves and the way we do that, it speaks volumes for other people. So, you know, are we taking care of ourselves? We, we know that, say, for example, we have staff members. We want them to actually take the breaks that they need for their mental health. We know this, but are we doing that for ourselves and recognizing that we lead by example, you know, especially as a parent, like if your child looks at you and they emulate what you're doing. So it really starts with us. And then the other thing is really about connecting right now, because especially if you're working remotely with a team, we are physically not together, but need to be socially connected more than ever. Like I don't use the word socially distancing right now. It's physically distancing because we don't actually need to be close in order to feel close. And research from Harvard teaches us that the number one predictor of both our long-term health and our happiness is social connection. And so making sure that we're connecting with ourselves, with our colleagues, with our team members, because that is the number one thing right now that we can do to really support both the mental health of us and of our teams. Carol, there's an old stat, okay, that someone told me one time, I have no idea the source, and they, they did all this research apparently, and they said that our um, emotions or our attitude tends to be the average of the five people we spend the most amount of time with. And so I don't think that could be truer than today, what's happening. Like, I talked to some business owners, and they're like, you know, in a complete different spectrum than I am. I'm a little bit of an optimist, maybe in a naive way, but an old hockey coach of mine used to say, you know, you don't judge a person by how they handle success. You judge people by how they handle adversity. And I think that's what's going on right now. Yeah. And I don't think we do enough self-checking and building into our day, Jillian, those, those micro things I'll call to make us happy. <laughs> and because uh, I know for Cheryl, the marketing show makes her happier than anything else. I, know, I, I don't think there's finished. anything that makes her happier. You know, I was thinking, you know, this is my little piece of happiness. Why aren't we doing this seven days a week? 
because you couldn't stand to deal with me seven days a week on this show unless we had Jillian on every time. Hey, Jillian, thank you so much. The work you're doing you. is, uh, I think, very unique. If you guys aren't following Jillian on LinkedIn or different social channels, I know you're on a bunch of them, JillianMandage.com. Thanks so much for joining us today and all the great things you've helped us do at self and into communications. Yes, and thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and any comments or any suggestions on future shows, you can leave in the comments below or email us at engage at intocommunications.com. And we will see you next week, everybody. And be happy.